here's a question for you. Are you slacker chic? Well, if you want to make a dramatic change in your home without spending a fortune, then yes, you are slacker chic. That's me. According to our Lisa Quinn, who has some simple painting tips to help you get motivated. Take a look. Picking paint color. As you can see, these days there are so many different tones to choose from. It can be really intimidating and overwhelming when you come in here to decide. I've got kind of a general rule that I like to use. Pick an inspiration piece that you already have in your home. Let's say like an area rug or a textile that has more than one color in it. If you pick a background color from that and use it on the walls, you're pretty much guaranteed some instant coordination. But if you don't have that piece or you're just starting from scratch, here's just some general rules that I like to say. I think one of the places where people go wrong is they end up going a little bit too pastel. They want green. They pick something like this. They want blue. They pick something like this. They want pink. I actually had a girlfriend that picked these three colors and painted them in her foyer, kitchen, and dining room, and it looked like the Easter Bunny lived there, and she didn't know what she'd done wrong. And I think maybe what she did wrong was not pick colors that had these brown and gray undertones in them. As you can see here, these aren't as bright and they aren't as pastel. So when you're looking, try doing something a little less Right. So here's the thing, though. Technology has caught up with us. And what they've developed now, Benjamin Moore's got this. I think some other paint companies do as well. But these are little sample bottles. As you can see, they're small. They cost about $3.99. And what's wonderful about them is it's a really inexpensive way to see if you like your color or not. It covers an area, I don't know, pretty big, about poster size, which is great. But what I also suggest to people is maybe you just go ahead and invest in a poster board and paint that instead of your wall. You hang that poster up in your room. Let it see how the light affects it during the day and even how the artificial light affects it at night. And then that way, if you decide that you don't like it, you just pull the poster board off. No commitment. We love that. Preparation is the key to when you're painting. You really got to clean the walls thoroughly. Um, you need to use something like TSP or known as trisodium phosphate. And what does that do? It just will get rid of all the grime and grease. Oh, it, so especially like if you're painting a kitchen or a bathroom or something, sometimes you have the scum on the walls? Yes, yes. And it will degloss paint. So if you have a semi-gloss paint, a shiny paint already, it will take off that sheen. Because if you don't take it off, the paint will peel right off. Let's talk about brushes. Cheap versus expensive, they both have their advantages. Cheap, you can get for a dollar, right. maybe two dollars, mm -hmm. and do the same job. However, what's going to happen is you are going to see brush marks more likely with the cheap brushes, and bristles will fall out and get stuck in the paint. The expensive brushes tend to distribute the paint more evenly, so no brush strokes, mm -hmm. and they will hold more paint in the bristle. Right. So when you go to paint, you don't have to keep on dipping in the can as often. Just like maybe you need to make an investment in the brush, I imagine you need to make an investment in the paint. Yes, most definitely. If you use a cheap paint, um, sure, you could save $10, 20 $30 on a gallon, mm -hmm. but you might have to do two, three, or four coats. Right. And then you end up spending the same amount. And, and you've it, had all that extra work. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it does pay to go for the more expensive brand because mm -hmm. they have a better hide, which means that it'll cover up the wall better so you don't see through it. What about holes in the wall? I know I like to move my artwork around a lot and I end up with sort of the Swiss cheese look and I've had mm -hmm. a lot of people, I've been in their houses too, and they think that the paint will fill in the hole and then it just looks awful. Right. What are you really supposed to do? Really you're supposed to patch the hole and mm -hmm. it's a lot easier than most people think. You just use something called vinyl spackle and use the uh, spackle knife. How oh, easy putty knife. Mm -hmm. And then you just put some on the putty knife, smear it over the hole, wait for it to dry, then sand it smooth, and then you're ready to paint. Here's my tip. Paint barefoot. That way, if you step in it, you won't track it through the house. What do you think about that one? That sounds pretty good. Can I get a job here, maybe? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fill out an application. <laughs> Thanks, Seb. Great advice for everybody. I'm getting inspired to, uh, to paint my room now. Thanks so much. Oh, you're welcome. Painting tips from Lisa without giving you the old brush off. <laughs> All right.